In this video, we're going to be talking about a topic that everybody has been talking about lately, the right to repair. Every video I post, people ask me, what do you think about the right to repair? Do you support the right to repair? Of course I do. I'm a repair shop owner. We've been in this business for almost nine, 10 years now, and we get anywhere between 30 to 50 devices a day. As a shop owner, I can tell you 20 to 30% of devices that come to our shop here are deemed a no fix because of multiple reasons. Let's say I'm working on this motherboard here, and it's obvious that we have a problem with that one specific chip on the board. The chip has a marking on it, XYZ123. I go online to look for that one specific chip and I cannot find it. The reason is maybe that chip was made specific to the manufacturer of that board. And the chip maker was asked not to sell that chip out to the public. So the only way we can get that chip is from the manufacturer and the manufacturer would not provide that chip to us. So now we are left with a non-functional board and a board that we cannot fix because we cannot get our hands on that chip. Or it could be that this chip is readily available from DigiKey, Mouser, eBay or AliExpress, but the manufacturer rebranded the chip with their own name and markings. So now when we go online to look for it, we're not going to find it and we're not going to know what that chip is because the marking on it is specific to the manufacturer of this board. Reason number three to why we may not be able to replace a chip on the board even if we find that chip is serialization. That chip may be married to other components on the board via a serial number or a code and the only party who can reprogram that chip with the serial number is the maker, the manufacturer of that device. We are left with a non-functional board. Even though we have the part, we are left with a non-functional board because that part is not programmed to communicate with other components on the board such as the CPU. So we discussed we may not be able to find the chip because that chip was made specific to the manufacturer. We discussed uh, the chip may have been rebranded. The chip may be readily available, but it has been rebranded to the maker of the device. So we do not find out what that chip is. Reason number three, serialization. And reason number four, we do not have access to circuit diagrams and board diagrams, and we were not able to figure out what's going on with this device. Why is it important that we have circuit diagrams or board diagrams? A circuit diagram alone is not enough. You cannot do anything with a circuit diagram, but we need the board diagram. The reason is maybe we have a problem with this chip here. The chip is testing bad, but maybe the chip itself is not what's bad. Maybe something else on the board is causing this chip to act faulty. Let's take a look at the board diagram I have open here. Let's say I suspect that we have a problem with this chip. I inspected the board under a thermal cam and I see a lot of feet coming out of this chip. And I just suspect that this chip may be bad, but we're not sure if the chip itself is bad. By having a board diagram, I can click on pin number one of the chip and it tells me that pin number one connects with this component, this pad, and this chip. So now I know that that chip may be faulty because of maybe possibly this component or this component. And then we go ahead and do measurements on those specific components. Or maybe we click on this pin here and it tells me that this pin of the chip connects with this component, this and this component. Now I have more knowledge. Now I'm able to test those three components and see if we have a fault on any one of those three. Or maybe you click on a pin and it connects to somewhere back of the board. If we flip the board, it connects right here. It connects with this chip here and it connects with this pad here. Okay, then I can check on those components. So having a board diagram is very important because we can go from something that may have been deemed a no fix to something that have a higher chance of being fixed now because we know how components connect on the board. Now having the schematic alone is not enough because even if you understand how the schematic work, you do not know where those components are located on the board. Let's say we are looking at the schematic right here. I look and I know I understand how this circuit work. Okay, we have a MOSFET, we have a resistor, we can measure that resistor, but where is that resistor located on the board? We need the board diagram. We need to go to the board diagram and look for R6055. Now, I do not have the same schematic open as a board diagram here, but let's say, for example, I want to look for R6, whatever, okay? R6010, enter. It shows me that that component is located on that part of the board. So a schematic alone will be of no help if we do not have a board diagram. And I feel like the board diagram is more important than having a schematic because sometimes we can just figure out faults by uh, looking at components and what component connect with what component and then we can look and see if there's any physical damage on the components or we can measure components, so on and so forth. It would be nice to have both, but I feel like the board diagram is a lot more important than an actual schematic. So four reasons why we would not be able to fix a device 
are the ones that I mentioned. Circuit diagram, board diagram, not being able to find the chip or the chip has been rebranded or serialization. Those are the four things that prevent us from being able to fix a device. Now, why is right to repair very important? Let's say a customer has a laptop, any brand, whatever brand, let's say Apple, Apple MacBook, a 2019 Apple MacBook. He's been working on it for the past six, seven months. He has a lot of important documents on there, research documents. He has a lot of family pictures. He has his kids' pictures. He has his wedding pictures, so on and so forth. He has a lot of important information on that laptop. But the laptop decided to fail one day. He opens up the laptop, power on, and it does not power on. He brings it over to us. We take it in, we inspect the board under the microscope, and we find out that there's a problem with the chip. A chip looks blown, and we have to change that chip. We cannot find that chip. We go online, we look for that chip, and we cannot find it. Now we cannot fix the board, or we cannot get the information from that laptop because we're not able to fix the chip. The SSD on that laptop is soldered onto the motherboard. The SSD is not a SATA drive, it's not an M.2 drive, so we cannot remove the hard drive and extract the information externally. We have to be able to fix the board in order to extract information from that hard drive. What do we do? The customer cares more about the information than the laptop. He wants the information. The only way to get the information from that laptop is to be able to fix that motherboard. We cannot get the chip because we do not have access to that chip. What do we do? We cannot do anything. We cannot fix the laptop and we cannot get the information. If we cannot fix the motherboard, how can we extract the information for the customer? Data recovery. We cannot. So what if we get a good working board and we desolder the hard drive from the motherboard and we solder the hard drive chips back on the good board? Are we going to be able to retrieve the data or read the data from the hard drive? The chips are taken off from the faulty board and they are soldered on to the good board. Are we going to be able to read the files? No, because the chips are serialized. The chips are married on to other components on the board, such as the CPU. We're not going to be able to see any files. Apple must reprogram those chips in order for the chips to talk with the CPU. Okay, so I'm going to take this MacBook to Apple. Maybe Apple can help me out with recovering data. Unfortunately, that's not the case. Apple will not recover your data and Apple will not fix your motherboard. Because Apple cannot fix your motherboard, they will not be able to retrieve your data. So what will Apple do for you? They will offer to replace your motherboard or to replace the whole laptop and it's not going to come cheap. You're looking $1,000 to $1,500 to replace your motherboard or laptop or whatever the case may be, but you lost your information. So how can you get your information? The only way to be able to get information from the hard drive that is soldered onto the motherboard would be to take it to a repair shop like us, but we need to be able to have access to components in order to fix your motherboard. If we don't have access to components, we're not going to be able to fix your motherboard and we're not going to be able to get your information. So that's why the right to repair is important. If we have the component, we can fix your board and if we are able to fix your board, you will get both a working MacBook and your data. Apple MacBook is only one example. There are a lot of devices that we get on a daily basis that we're not able to fix because we don't have access to circuit or board diagrams or we cannot get a specific chip for that motherboard or the chip is serialized and there's nothing that we can do to fix that device. So right now the ultimate question is, what should we be asking for when it comes to right to repair? Right now, the way I see it, we are asking for everything. We are asking for schematics, we are asking for board diagrams, we are asking for components, we are asking for genuine parts, we are asking to be able to bypass serialization or to be able to program our own components so they can communicate properly with other components on the board. We are asking for everything. Is that a valid request? Are we gonna get everything that we are asking for? I highly doubt that. I highly doubt that we're gonna get everything that we are asking for. It's not logical to be asking for everything. If I'm, I mean, the way I think of it, let's say I'm a company who is working on designing a game console, okay? We have Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo. I wanna design a game console called XYZ, and that game console is gonna have features that you're not gonna be able to find in any other console in the market. I hire 1020 engineers and I tell them I have an idea. I wanna design a game console that would play like this, that would have those features, and so on and so forth. I want you to design that console for me. The engineers are being paid a lot of money and the engineers will start to work on the idea. Maybe it takes them one, two, three years to design the idea that's in my head. Now we have a circuit diagram, we have a board diagram, we send that board diagram to factories to design the motherboards. We get that motherboard back, we do the assembly of the components and now we have a product. We have a product. Nobody else has that product in the market. Now, 
why would I take that circuit diagram that we spend millions on, hundreds and thousands of dollars or millions on, and just pass it on to the public? Why would I do that? I mean, it's not logical, it's not realistic to ask me to pass a circuit diagram that I spent a lot of money to create and just pass it on to anybody. I mean, what's a schematic between friends? Here, take it. You want the board diagram? Take it. Oh, you want to know what components I put on that board? Sure, take it. You want to be able to program the chips on the board? Sure, here. That's the programmer and that's the program. Go ahead and do it. It's not logical. I do not think that bill will ever pass with the way that we are thinking right now. It's not logical. Schematics and board diagrams are nice to have, but I do not think legally we can enforce that on the manufacturer. I do not think that we can force the maker of this device to provide us with a circuit diagram or a board diagram. I do not think that bill will ever pass. I mean, that's the way I see it. I'm not a lawyer in any way, shape or form, but I put it on myself. If I'm a person who created that device, I spent a lot of time and money making the circuit diagram and board diagram, why would I just go and pass that circuit diagram to every person in the world? Why? That's private property, and I'm the only person who should keep that property. I mean, I would love for every manufacturer to provide schematics and board diagrams. It will make our job a lot easier, and it would be awesome. But we do not live in a perfect world. Maybe in a perfect world that would be possible, but we do not live in a perfect world, and I do not think that bill will ever pass. Uh, we can ask for parts, but I do not think that we can force manufacturers to provide us with schematics and board diagrams. That's the way I see it. I hope I'm wrong. I hope there's a way to be able to force that on manufacturers, but I'm thinking logical and I'm being realistic on what we should ask when it comes to right to repair. I mean, right now, if we cannot ask for schematics and board diagrams, what is an alternative option? We want to be able to know how that board work in order to fix that board, because I told you one of the reasons we're not able to fix a device is not knowing how that device works. So having a circuit diagram and board diagram will help tremendously in troubleshooting and fixing a board. What is an alternative option if manufacturers do not want to give you the circuit diagram or board diagram for their device? What is another option? Maybe they can do something like ZXW Tools, where you have a program, you subscribe to it, and you have access to board diagrams and circuit diagrams. We cannot download those schematics, we cannot download the board diagrams, but that doesn't really matter because we have full access using that program that we subscribe to. We pay the manufacturer money to be able to access that program, and we have access to circuit diagrams and board diagrams. I think we have a better chance of having this pass compared to asking manufacturers to just send us the files and provide us with board diagrams and circuit diagrams. Same thing with serialization. Maybe we can ask manufacturers to provide us with an interface where we can go, we can log in and we can reprogram a touch ID or a face ID or a true tone on a third party screen or whatever the case may be. Maybe we can ask for it that way. So right now, as much as I would like to have everything I spoke about in this video being part of the right to repair, I really highly doubt that we're going to get all of that and we may have the whole bill rejected because of those things that may not seem logical or they may not seem fair to the company who spent a lot of money making that product. We can start by asking for components. We want to be able to have access to every component that we are looking for. I think that would be a step in the right direction. And then later on, we can take it a step further and see what we can do about schematics, board diagrams, so on and so forth. I think we have a higher chance of right to repair passing when we are not demanding a lot, when we are not asking for private property. A schematic and board diagram is private property. I do not know if there is a way to force manufacturers to provide those to us, but I think now the main focus should be we want to be able to access components on whatever device or whatever board we are working on. So I think uh, I may continue in part two, but right now I'm going to end it right here. Let me know what you think. Let me know if the points I made seem valid. And I'll see you again in the next video.